Nice to meet you, this is the Hobby IT channel. Thank you for watching today. In this channel, it is a video that challenges making things with IT. Programs and circuit diagrams are available on the website below, so please make use of them. Let's have fun together. This time, we will use M5 Stacks Timer Camera to post images to Line. This product has an ESP32 as a microcontroller and an OV3660 camera. Take a picture with the camera at startup and get a JPEG image. It will be the content of posting the image to Line. Posting to Line is performed as an HTTP client, so you will use the API of the Line service. I would like to proceed to the table of contents. The table of contents looks like this. First, we will understand the development environment and Arduino settings from device selection. Next, set up Line and get a token. Next, I would like to proceed with the flow of programming, writing, and operation confirmation. Now let's move on to device selection. When it comes to equipment selection, I try to find and use the cheapest equipment possible. Some ESP32 cams are sold on Amazon for about 1,500 yen, but the product images do not have the technical conformity mark, so it is basically illegal to use them in Japan. As a reliable product and a web camera for electronic work, these were the cheapest in the range of research, so I will choose from these products. The two on the left have the same circuit configuration, so they have exactly the same performance. The further to the right, the better the performance. Among them, the rightmost timer camera is less than 3000 yen and has the best performance, so we will use it. Of course, it also complies with technical standards, so it is legal to use in Japan. As you can see, this timer camera is a finished product mounted on a board, so there is no wiring. We will continue programming to realize image acquisition and line posting. There is no wiring and I don't know if it can be called electronic work, but I think there are many things I can learn because I will understand the circuit diagrams that have been published. Move on. A collection of items needed for electronic work. Based on this, we calculated the cost of the comparison table earlier. This Excel format file can be downloaded from the Hobby IT site. I would like to see the actual timer camera use this time and check what it is like. This is timer camera. There are two types, X and F, but the lenses are different. X has a narrower field of view, and if you want to capture a wide area, use F. F stands for fish eye, which is a fish eye lens. This electronic work uses X. I would like to check inside. This time I purchased from the M5 Stack official website. It was sent from China, but in the case of Japan, it arrived in about two weeks. The product is complete, so there is nothing to assemble. The base on the back can be removed, so you can use it as needed. It comes with a micro USB cable and can be connected like this. You can connect to your computer with this cable, so you can develop with just this. Next, I will check the official document. This is the document of timer camera used this time, and it is open to the public on the official website. The wiring itself is complete as a product, but the port configuration is used in the settings, so it is necessary to understand how it is wired. Move on. As for the development environment, we will use Arduino. It is widely used for learning all over the world. In addition, there are plenty of functions such as libraries, and there are many learning materials on the internet. It is easy to understand and easy to use, so I will continue to use it this time. Move on. We will set up the Arduino. Configure the board settings for the timer camera used this time. First, add the URL for timer camera from the Arduino IDE settings. Press OK to complete the addition, then start Boards Manager. Enter M5 Stack in the search window and install the latest M5 Stack. Move on. Select M5 Stack Timer Cam in board setting of Arduino IDE. Other settings can be left at their default values, but when writing or using the serial monitor, make sure that the timer camera connection port is selected as the port. Move on. Now add the library. Start the library manager first. Once launched, type timer cam as you can see here. Select the same library as displayed here and install the latest version. You will be asked if you want to install all related libraries, but this time, select only this and install it. Once the installation is complete, you are now ready to use the Arduino IDE. Move on. We will use the Line API to post images, so we will acquire a token for access. Open the settings from the Line app on your smartphone and select your account. Next. 
Turn on login permission in the account menu. Return to home, enter line notify from the search for adding friends, and add this. This completes the settings for the line app. Next, proceed to setting from the computer. Access line notify on your computer's web browser and log in with the same account as the line app. After logging in, open my page. Move on. Click the issue token button. Enter a token name. This time I entered it like this. Move on. A token will be issued, so make a note of it in a notepad. We will use it later to configure the program. Line settings are now complete. Move on. Let's check the Arduino program. The library is loaded first. Next, set up the line token you obtained earlier. Also, set the SSID and password according to the usage environment. Since the server function is not used this time, there is no need to set the IP address. If you forget to change this setting, it will not work properly, so be sure to change it according to your usage environment. Next, configure port settings. I grasp the port configuration from the official document of M5 stack and set it here. No special changes are required. Finally, it defines things like the HTTPS client. Move on. The setup function starts the serial monitor first. Next, the voltage drop check is described, but this part will not be executed because it will not be stopped this time. I think that it may be stopped if brownout voltage drop errors occur frequently, such as when using a battery. Next, the initial settings of the camera are performed. This determines the image size. This time it's a still image, so I'm using the XGA size of 1024 times 768. Change this value if you want to change the image size. Move on. Next, we will set the LED and connect to Wi-Fi. The LED blinks every second while connecting to Wi-Fi. It lights up when the connection is completed. Next we are skipping the certificate check. Since the correctness of the server for the URL cannot be confirmed, security is weakened. However, this time I skipped it because it is not important in terms of data. The method for checking the certificate is described in the summary column, as it is implemented in another post. Then I'm running a function that takes a picture with the camera and gets a JPEG image. Finally, the function to post a line is executed, and the setup function ends. Since there is no processing in the loop function, which is the processing during startup, there is no particular confirmation. Therefore, next we will check the functions defined individually. This is the function that posts images to line. First, we are connecting to the line server. When connected, proceed to the processing in the if statement. After completing the connection, create a send header and send the header. Next, we will send the image data in units of 1000 bytes. Finally, the end boundary is sent and the processing related to transmission ends. The transmission has been completed, so wait for the response. If the line feed code arrives, it will be judged that there was a response. Move on. Display all signals received during the connection on the serial monitor. After this is done, the server connection is closed. Also, on line 200, if the initial server connection fails, a connection failure is displayed on the serial monitor. Next, let's check what kind of data is being sent by this program during normal operation. This is the transmission data. We will send data with HTTP POST. The boundary is set in the first header part to clarify the delimitation of data. The header information is sent first, then the message to be posted, and then the JPEG image data, separated by boundaries. The message part is the message displayed on the line app and I think it's good to use words that make this post recognizable. This time I am doing it this way. Since the amount of image data is large, it is divided into 1000 bytes and sent, as confirmed in the previous program. I have checked the program. Next, we will write the program itself. Writing, timer camera is very simple. First, connect it to your computer with a micro USB Type-C cable. Next, check the board and port in the Arduino IDE settings. Finally, just hit the write button. It automatically puts ESP32 in write mode and writes. Move on. This is the content posted on the line app. You should be able to see the messages and images displayed. As we have confirmed so far, we can confirm that when timer camera starts up, it acquires an image with the camera and posts that image to line. Since it will be posted every time it is started, this is the content that was posted after starting it three times. With the above, the operation has been confirmed without any problems, so this is the end for this time. We will continue to take on the challenge of making things using IT like this, so please give us a high rating and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.